Hi, this is Low Tech Bible Discoveries, and thanks for stopping by and visiting with us. What we want to talk to you today about is um, names and the meaning of names. Have you ever gone through a book or something and researched what your name means? I have because it's just really interesting. My name means Lily. Nothing big, nothing exciting about that. It just means Lily. And my husband's name means a nobleman or some rank of, uh, uh, some type of hierarchy. So uh, my husband was doing some studying and he was sharing with me about uh, the first 10 generations of the Bible, which are the patriarchs. Uh, we're wondering, well, why did, why did you go through the first 10 generations? Well, right here, 10. What does 10 mean? Well, I, I, I've got my low-tech thing here. It's my phone. 10 means it's a symbol of authority of God and His government on earth. And it also symbolizes the law and completeness. And another thing that the number 10 means is, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, he's a 10 or she's a 10? Well, that means perfection. And another thing that 10 means it's a... It's a symbol or a matter of harmony. So the first 10 generations refer to God and his authority, and it also refers to the law and completeness. Now, what are the first 10 generations in the Bible? We've got them listed right here. Now, I want you to keep in mind that the Bible was written hundreds of years ago by 40 different authors, and it is, uh, it's amazing how only God could do this. Man couldn't do this. Well, let's plot and plan and, and I'll, we'll put this name in here and we'll put this name in here and put this name in here because it took 1,500 years to write the Bible. There's no way that they could have collaborated. So the God's Word is inspired by God, written by man. Um, now, who are the first 10 generations in the Bible? And this is the definition of their names. Now, I'm going to have to re refer to my, my phone just for on a couple of the names, if you could just bear with me again, because like I said, I kind of love tech. So what does Adam mean? Adam actually means man. It's nothing fancy. It's just very simple, man. It also means to be read. It doesn't mean uh, he had red hair uh, or he was embarrassed. We believe that it means to be red. And who, as in beaten or bloodied, like that type of red. Now, Seth was the son of Adam, and his name means appointed. And I want you to know exactly what appointed means. It means designated for a specific purpose or a specific time. That's what appointed means. So Seth means appointed. Enos, the son of Seth, means mortal. Mortal means the opposite of immortal. It just means flesh and blood, and you are going to perish at the end of your mortal life. Uh, Canaan means sorrow. Now here's something that I found was really interesting. The definition of sorrow means a feeling of deep distress caused by loss, disappointment, or other misfortune suffered by oneself or others. And you, can you get that? It is deep distress. It's not just sad. It's deep distress. Now, malal means bless God. And I want you to keep in mind that anytime you see like E-L, that refers to God, and this means bless God. And Jared means shall come down. How do you like my high-tech pointer? But uh, Jared means shall come down. Enoch, the son of Jared, means teaching. That's pretty self-explanatory. Teaching, who were, what were teachers in the Old Testament? They were rabbis. They were rabbis. Okay, and now we have Methuselah. That name might be familiar to some of you because he was the oldest living man on earth. He lived 969 years. 
and he was the son of Enoch, Methuselah. His, his name means, his death shall bring. I don't know why someone would name their child, hey, his death shall bring, hey, you know? So it had to be a reason or a purpose of why his name was Methuselah. Now, Lamech is the son of Methuselah. It means to make low and mighty. It doesn't say low or mighty. It means to make low mighty. And then Noah, which we all know about, Noah's Ark and the flood, that means rest. It also means favor and also means fulfilled. So these are the first 10 generations that are listed in the Bible. And again, what is 10? 10 means perfection. It also means God's law. Okay. And now, um, now that we've gone over the meanings of each one of these names, and these are the first 10 generations in the lineage of Jesus. It's in his family tree. It's also in our family tree because we're all from, actually, we all come from Noah, which comes from Adam. Now, here we go. We're going to go to this screen over here. And if you take all of these definitions, and I want you to read them as if you were reading a sentence, and I want you to just think about who do you think of, or what do you think of when you have put all of these into a sentence? Well, here we go. I'm have to get way out of the way now. Man to be read. A man was beaten or bloodied and crucified, appointed mortal, sorrow, God bless, shall come down teaching, his death shall bring to make low, mighty, rest, favor, and fulfilled. Again, so a man was beaten, a spe and a specific, he was specifically made mortal. God made himself specifically mortal because of his sorrow and disappointment. And he wanted to save mankind. And God wanted to bless mankind. And he shall come down. Who came down? God himself came down and became mortal. And that's who we know of Jesus. Because, you know, Jesus was a Jew. But he became Jesus and he came down teaching all of Jesus' ministry over 30 years was teaching, teaching love, teaching forgiveness, teaching about God. So he came down teaching, and his death shall bring. What did his death shall bring? It made him low because God brought himself down to a mortal state, a lowly mortal state so that he could die on the cross for you and for me and for everyone. And then after his resurrection, he became mighty again because he was um, resurrected and became the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords again. And at when, or when he was on the cross, what did he say? He said, it is fulfilled. And what happened? Rest. And favor and fulfilled. So God was able to rest and mankind now has favor as long as we receive and believe on Jesus we're able to go to Jesus or to, to God, God Jesus same, in the name of Jesus as long as we have received him and fulfilled. So in all of the names of the first 10 generations from Adam to Noah is a prophetic message to all of us in the Bible on the, the coming of Jesus and his beating and his suffering and the need for salvation for mankind and how that his death would bring favor and uh, fulfillment on the cross. So, if you haven't seen some of the other videos that we've done, it's just a, we've done a few videos on how the cross was prophesied in the Old Testament, you can now see how 
the cross is also prophesied in the first ten generations, just in their names alone. The Bible is the only book that conceals and reveals. So once you do believe on Jesus and receive him as your Savior, because your eyes will be opened because many people say, I can't understand the Bible. I don't understand it. It's too hard for me to understand. Once you receive Christ, your eyes will be opened and you'll, you'll go back and go, you know what, that wasn't as difficult as I thought to understand. But there's more to it because how many of you knew that the number 10 meant God's law and perfection? And how many of you knew that Noah meant rest and favor and fulfilled? Again, here are the ten, first 10 generations. Now, when you have some time, check out, check out the next 10 generations and see what their names mean. If you want to look up what your name means too, go ahead. Um, you might be surprised. But here, Low Tech Bible Discoveries. Thanks for stopping by and visiting. Check out the other videos and share this video. We really want you to share the video. We would appreciate it if you would subscribe. But our main purpose is not to build a channel in its notoriety. Our main purpose is to build the name of Jesus and to, and to let you uh, receive him, know him as your Lord and Savior, and we love you. Thanks for watching.